It's better than he has been. But did give up that two-run lead, and we're now tied up at six. Metashevsky stands in, and that one misses low, one and oh. Austin <coughs> making his second appearance at home of the year, but that first time, it was against the Dodgers here as the 1-0. Slider gets away from Perkins with a backstop, and down to second base goes Brandon Smith. What? So now the go-ahead runs in scoring position. Didn't say he couldn't handle it, it gets away. <laughs> Jordan Carr, by the way, he gets noticed this as well. So both him and Ray get no decisions tonight. They combine for eight strikeouts and four walks. And this one is going to hit Michael Metashevsky. A fastball that rode in on him. And he throws his bat, as that one's got to hurt. Austin did not hit one batter at Hopkins this spring. Gee, the graphic guy can't keep up. For the fifth time tonight, in six games this spring with Hopkins, Austin had a 1.50 ERA as that one bounces low and it misses 1-0. and No record in six innings pitch. Nine hits, two runs, one earned. Struck out two, a walking three for the Blue Jays, but opponents hit 346 against Suter. He'll be a junior next year with the ball club. And this is his third appearance of the year against the Dodgers. Comes in with a 4.15 ERA and opponents are hitting 294 against him. That is less than what he allowed at Hopkins. 1-0. That one misses low and inside. 2-0 mm. count. Runners on first and second for the Dodgers. Austin, a tall kid, 6'4", 185. Ooh, skinny. 6'4", 185. And he lifts this one high in the air. Who's the skinny? Right side, but that one Better. trails foul and out of play. Austin's got a teammate on the team from high school, Jamal Wade, who's still rehabbing, working his way back to the ball club. They both played at St. Paul's here in Baltimore. Jamal went off to Maryland, like his older brother Lamont, who was just drafted, a former Redbird as well. And Austin went to Johns Hopkins. 2-1, now shows Bunt. That went back to the mound, but Garrett, or Gavin Sheets cuts it off, fires to third, and gets the lead runner. What a play by the Redbirds' first baseman. Oh my goodness, Gavin Sheets. He came out of nowhere and showed off that blazing speed of his. And then that rocket arm over to Garrett Hudson at third to get the lead runner, Brandon Smith. <laughs> Metashevsky to second. Stevenson on first with a fielder's choice. There's one out now and two on. Ben Bomberger at the dish. What that mean? Suter looks back at second. He's, um... They could have threw the first, but a they second the third time. instead. Now kicks and delivers. Oh, Fastball so upstairs, and the count is mm -hmm. one and zero. Oh. But like I said, his third appearance against the Dodgers this summer, out of four appearances on the mound for the Redbirds. Looks back to second. A long way to between pitches. Now steps off the mound. And his last time with <coughs> the Dodgers. One and two-thirds innings pitch, allowed two hits, struck out one while facing seven batters. First time, one inning, and a scoreless ninth inning, and also struck out one. Ground ball left side, this could be two. Warman to Golson, 
to Sheets. Damn. Six, four, three, double play. Austin Suter works out of the jam. Nicely done by the Johns Hopkins Blue Jay. On to the bottom of the ninth. Can the Redbirds walk it off? They already have one this year. We'll find out. We're knotted up at six as we head to the ninth. Stick with us here on the Redbirds Baseball Network. So they call that a fielder's choice. Um, drop third strike, and instead of throwing it down the first, they threw it to uh, third to get the lead uh, base runner. And so Johnny made it to, to first, but it wasn't considered it wasn't considered a hit. <clears throat> 